Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Magi David's Lab. This is the first episode in a new series I'm doing all about using RS-232 to send and receive data to a computer using HyperTerminal. This first episode will cover the basics, and then in upcoming episodes, we'll delve into more advanced programming concepts and methods. In this episode, we'll cover how to configure a 16F882 for RS-232 communication, setting up HyperTerminal to talk to the PIC, and then we'll write code to send a string of characters from the PIC to the computer. Since RS-232 communication requires voltages ranging from minus 15 volts to plus 15 volts, you can't connect a PIC microcontroller directly to the RS-232 port on a computer. We need an interface chip to convert the digital signal from the microcontroller to compatible voltages for RS-232, such as the MAX-232. Just about every RS-232 interface I see is going to require a number of capacitors, which are used to pump the voltage up to those required for RS-232 communication. Next, we'll need an RS-232 cable, which can be purchased from just about any electronics store. And finally, a microcontroller such as the PIC16F882 and the datasheet for the MCU. To keep things simple, I'm going to be using Neolox Mini 28A since it has just about everything we need to develop our code. To write and compile code, I'll be using MPLAB X and a PICKit 3. However, MPLAB 8 and a PICKit 2 will work just fine. Okay, let's connect the PICKit 3 to the Mini 28A and then connect the RS-232 cable to the computer and the Mini 28A. Let's begin by configuring the first variable we'll use, and that's going to consist of these two lines of code here. We'll be adding more variables as the program grows in complexity and ability, but for now we just need this one. This is where the program begins, and I've got this org statement here to tell the compiler I want the main code to start at this address. I always set up my configuration routines at the end of the file I'm working with, or in a separate file altogether. At this point, this code does nothing more than kick the internal clock up to 8 MHz. Okay, next we have the RS-232 config file, which consists of code written based on the instructions in the PIC16F882 datasheet. All of this code configures the various registers required to initiate RS-232 communication, and in most cases you can cut and paste and modify this block of code to generate the type of RS-232 communication your project requires. I do want to cover these last two lines of code. They are important. This command turns on RS-232 receive mode, and this is what we want most of the time. The next line actually turns on the RS-232 communication module. Okay, so now we have the MCU running at 8 MHz and the RS-232 module is configured and listening for a character from the computer. But we want to send data to the computer. To do this, we have to write a few routines to configure the RS-232 port to send data. So let's create a subroutine that will make all the changes we need to send a character, and let's call it RS-232 underscore SCON, and it will consist of the following code. Bank select RCSTA, BitClearF RCSTA, comma, CREN. This turns off receive mode. Bank select TXSTA, and then bit set F TXSTA, TXEN. This turns on send mode. And then we can return back to the calling routine. So now when we send a character, we just have to call this routine to first turn on send mode. Now we need to create a routine to actually send the character to the RS-232 module in the MCU. Let's call this RS-232 underscore send, and it will consist of the following lines. Bank select TXREG, move WF TXREG. This actually moves the contents of W into the transmit register for the RS-232 module. And finally, go to RS-232 underscore wait. 
And finally, we need to wait until the current character has successfully transmitted before sending another. So let's create another routine called RS232 underscore wait. And this routine consists of bank select TXSDA. We then test bit TRMT to see if it's set. If it is set, then transmission is complete and we can exit this routine. If it's not set, we loop around back to the beginning of the subroutine and test again. Okay, now we are ready to send our first character to the computer, but first we need to configure Hyperterminal to the right settings. Okay, to find Hyperterminal, click Start, All Programs, Accessories, Communication, and finally, Hyperterminal. Name the connection RS232 Project and click OK. Make sure Connect Using is set to COM1 and then click OK. Set bits per second to 57600. Data bits to 8. Parity none. Stop bits 1. And flow control hardware. Click Apply and then OK. And finally, click on the File menu and then Save As. And select Desktop from the drop down menu. And then click Save. Now, whenever we want to start up Hyperterminal with these settings, we simply need to double click on the desktop icon and we'll be all set to go. So we have Hyperterminal configured and ready to go. Now it's time to get back to MPLAB X and send a character to Hyperterminal. In the main routine, add the following lines. Okay, let's compile the program and see if our H shows up in Hyperterminal. And it does! <laughs> yeah, baby! Okay, I want to point out one other thing right here. You'll notice that I've actually got many H's sitting there. The multiple H's you see here are a result of the programming process with the PitKit 3. It's perfectly normal and nothing to worry about. Let's go ahead and spell out hello using this method. So we can just copy these two lines, replicate them for the other letters, then change them and compile and see what shows up in Hyperterminal. And there we go. And we did get the hello, but the first H is still there along with two duplicate hellos. And that could get a bit confusing as we try more and more things. So let's add code to clear the screen before we send any characters. And to do this, we're going to have to create an escape code. Now, escape codes are special commands that you can send to Hyperterminal to tell it to do special things. This includes clearing the screen, moving the cursor, changing colors, and other cool stuff as well. But for now, let's just clear the screen. To begin, let's call this subroutine RS232 underscore clear underscore SCR with the following code, move LW0X1B. This is the actual ASCII code for the escape character. All escape codes begin with this specific character. Then we'll send it out to Hyperterminal. Then we'll load the next escape code character, which is a left bracket, and send that to Hyperterminal. Then we'll move the ASCII value 2 into W, and then send that to Hyperterminal. And finally, J, which is the last character in the escape code. Once we're done, we can return and proceed as normal. Now we need to modify the main routine to actually call our new subroutine. So we'll add call RS232 clear SCR. And this will clear Hyperterminal screen before it prints. So let's see this in action. Let's go ahead and compile and program and see what happens. We got our first hello, second hello, and then boom, we clear the screen for our final actual run of the program. This really clears things up for us and we can see exactly what the program is doing and make sure it's doing what we want it to do. Well, I think that's about it for this first episode. And in upcoming episodes, we'll expand on what we've done here to include more complex topics, such as changing colors, adding a simple menu system, adding a prompt menu system, and a whole lot more. 
Thanks for watching and take care, and be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe.